I want to share with you the Scribe method as well as talk to you about the importance of Markdown. Scribe stands for specify a role, context, responsibility, instructions, banter, and evaluate. Let's digest one by one. It's very useful to give large language model a specific role, like for example, act as a blog writer, act as a social media manager, and so on. Here you can also add the preferred style or tone that you want large language model to inherit. Large language models are predicting one word at a time based on the input. The specific role acts as a key for a large language model to look which doors it should go to which would match this context. And here's one universal truth when it comes to prompting. You, as a user, have to have domain expertise and use specific language to condition the AI model and steer its responses to the right direction. But if you want to use AI to help you with tasks which are outside of your domain expertise, we put together ChatGPT Master Reference Guide with useful terms for different contexts and prompts. For example, how to write like a human, different marketing styles or a bunch of role prompting personas. You can find the link in the description box below and check it out for yourself. Okay, let's talk about context. Share any relevant background context, details, and even examples to help large language models to generate an appropriate response. More specific and the more context you provide, the better response you might expect. You need to clearly outline the task that you want large language model to perform. Be as specific as possible in describing what you want and most importantly, what success would look like. Provide large language model with detailed instructions that you wanted to follow in order to achieve that outcome. And break the complicated task into step-by-step -step instructions to help the large language model to guide you. And for each of these, you can use ChatGPT to help you. For example, breaking a task. Just literally tell what's the big task and ask it to break it in step-by-step -step instructions. Copy those and input them in here. That's it. You have to engage with large language model in a follow-up conversation to refine its initial responses. Ask clarifying questions or provide feedback. This, what we call banter, back and forth conversation and like more collaborative work, leads to the higher quality results. And always, always evaluate. Review the responses for accuracy. You can ask AI to even evaluate its effectiveness and accuracy. This kind of meta-level analysis helps the model to strengthen its generation abilities and reduce hallucinations. Before I show you Scribe in action and more advanced features, I want to explain why we like to use Markdown in our prompts and what Markdown is in the first place. Markdown is a lightweight markup language that you can use to add formatting elements to the plain text documents. When it comes to prompting, this Markdown language allows us to communicate to AI universally understood terms. Plus, AI model was already trained on these terms and it knows them. For example, instead of writing title, you can use what is known as headings. In Markdown, heading one is expressed with one hashtag. This way, AI model understands that a hashtag and combination of word is a title or heading. Sentences in your prompt which has hashtag in front of them will act as a titles and the text underneath it as part of one block. Now, if you want to establish structural hierarchy or substructures, you can use heading two, which are two hashtags. And we can keep breaking down the structure down to six hashtags or heading six. In Google Docs, you can visually see how this works. First thing to enable Markdown, you need to go to tools, preferences, and then automatically detect markdown, you need to check it and say yes. And now we are going to do a hashtag. It automatically goes to heading one. You can see it here. Let's say specify a role. Okay, so next we are going to be like, okay, this is our role and space again. And then another hashtag will tell content. Okay, here we're doing some context. So now these two are H1, so this is the initial structure. But if I did two hashtags and said mm, roll two, it becomes a substructure of the first one, but not another rule by itself. 
Now, if we, if I copy all of this and I go to the tool like Obsidian, which reads Markdown, you will see that this text is automatically expressed with a hashtag and it has different weight. And this is what I mean by universally understood. Important to remember that headings in Markdown don't work if you don't have space between hashtag and your text. So keep that in mind. You can also define banter and instruct model to evaluate the results. And here I like to take it one step further and use my criticize me mode. First of all, we specify a role, we give context, we describe responsibilities, and here we're now breaking up instructions. The instruction two is telling what it's supposed to do. So we are supposed to craft an email in this case. Three, as you can see, has B here. We're instructing ChatGPT what it's supposed to do once it crafted an email. First, it has to ask for my feedback and then refine the email content as needed. Now, four is evaluate stage and I'm going to tweak it a little bit with you. So once salesperson is satisfied with the format, you will finalize the email and encourage them to send it to the prospect. You will then ask feedback on the process to improve your future email crafting. Five is really optional, but we like to define how ChatGPT should interact with us, like what it should say at the beginning of a chat. In this case, it says, hello, I'm your personal expert salesperson, prospecting assistant. Not only it's a nice start of a conversation, but it also confirms that ChatGPT understood. So first thing, it followed the instructions of how it should interact with us. Second step, it's gathering all the necessary information. So it's asking for product details, target audience, brand background, previous successful emails. I could just continue until we get to the final email, but I want to show you the critic mode. So I tweaked a little bit our scribe method and included one more step in instructions. It is something like this, but you can adjust it however you want. Once you have presented the initial draft, you need to act as a harsh critic. Your job is to critique the email and convince me why it is bad and why a receiver would not like it. The first step scribe method does is asking for details. In this case, because I didn't want it to come up with all the details by myself, I told it to come up with all the details itself, and it did. And then we have an email and we have a critique. And here's like my first impression when I saw this email was like, it's too long. And here you go, in critique it says the email is a bit too long, which might lead to loss of interest, especially for busy prospects. And here's a bonus tip which very few people know or use actively. We've all been frustrated with ChatGPT not giving us what we want, right? I see him! Hide him in the crowd! Bruh. More effectively hidden in the- The whole point of Where's Waldo is to find him! Interestingly enough, telling a model what not to do is not as effective as specifically instructing what to do. Basically, use positive affirmative language instead of negative. Instead of saying, blog title should not exceed more more than 50 characters. Try say, blog title should always be shorter than 50 characters. Small tweaks like this can dramatically improve your experience with AI. And just imagine what learning advanced prompting can do for you. Take for example Joe, our genius brain behind all our <laughs> courses and prompts. He has developed this prompt, which turns ChatGPT into more like AutoGPT experience. And now this prompt, called Professor Synapse, is ranking as one of the top GPTs on GPT Store.